stand warm on this chilly, chilly weather. Good day to be inside. A cup of coffee. <sighs> Fireplace. Judith Spencer, welcome, welcome. Hey, Julia. Hey, Suzanne. Good to see y'all. Well, the cat's doing better <clears throat> after her procedure yesterday, but she's still on pain meds, so I'm watching her kind of uh, wobble around. Like I said, doing fine, but she was sure that my shoes were evil here a minute ago, and she was ready to get at my shoes. So. <laughs> uh. So I guess my point is, if a stoned-looking cat comes sailing into the camera, you'll know what's going on. Hey, Rebecca. She'll have decided that my prayer book needs to be attacked or something like that. Or tries to eat my microphone cord. There's that, too. This is the twelfth day of Christmas, <clears throat> and this evening we are on page 63, Evening Prayer, Rite 1. Bill, Scott, and Kathy, good to see you all. It's just welcoming everybody to the twelfth day of Christmas, and we are on page 63, Evening Prayer, Rite 1. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. <clears throat> Let us pray the Fos Hilaron together on page 64. Hey, Shannon. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the Vesper light. We sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. On the twelfth day of Christmas, we have two psalms. Our first one is Psalm 29, which begins on page 620. 
Uh oh, just looked up, y'all are already going. Psalm 29, page 620. <clears throat> All right, let us read Psalm 29 together. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a wild calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And then all in the temples of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. And then we continue over on page 727 with Psalm 98. Psalm 98, page 727. One of the themes of the psalm that we just read is water, and particularly raging water and the fact that God sits enthroned over it. You might remember from Genesis chapter 1, the creation story, where the, um, there was darkness and there was water, chaos. Uh, and the Spirit of the Lord moved over it. The wind of the Lord moved over it. And out of that chaos, creation was born. Uh, water, particularly water like this, like we just saw in Psalm 29, is often used in the Hebrew Scriptures to talk about chaos, to talk about the forces that are opposed to God. Uh, and so when, um, when the Lord reigns over them or the Lord sits enthroned over them, it is uh, imagery of God controlling the chaos, God in charge of the chaos. It's beautiful imagery when you understand that. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty war waters. Uh, just a powerful reminder that God is in charge from the ancient scriptures. Hey, everybody that just joined, it's good to see you. We are on page 727 getting ready to read Psalm 98. <clears throat> So those are psalms that I can go back to and stories that we can go back to, whether it's Genesis 1 or it's Psalm 29, if we want a sense of the power and majesty of God and a reminder that even in the chaos of our lives and the chaos of what's going on, that God is in control and that people have been testifying to that for 3,000 years. We have no idea how old these psalms are, but best guess would be somewhere around eight to 1,200 years before Jesus walked the earth. <clears throat> All right, Psalm 98, page 727. Let's go ahead and, and read together. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Our second reading for tonight comes from the end of the book of Isaiah. This is Isaiah 66, verses 18 to 23. The prophet writes, um, speaking with God's voice, for I know their works and their thoughts, and I am coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and shall see my glory, and I will set a sign among them. From them I will send survivors to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, which draw the bow, to Tubal and Yavan, to the coastlands far away that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your kindred from all the nations as an offering to the Lord on horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring a grain offering and a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. And I will also take some of them as priests and as Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath. All flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our canticle for this evening is on page 52. It is canticle number 7. Page 52, canticle 7, the Te Deum. When you get there, let us read through that together. Page 52, Canticle number 7. We praise Thee, O God, and we acknowledge Thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship Thee, the Father everlasting. To Thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To Thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of Thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, an adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, that it's humble thyself to be born of a virgin, when thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, that it's open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. <clears throat> And then we continue on with the Apostles' Creed, which is right there. Please join me as you are able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this point, let's go ahead and switch over to page 67 <clears throat> to continue with the prayers for the evening. Page 67. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And on page 68, our suffrages B, let us pray through those together. <clears throat> that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. That thy holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. That there may be peace to thy church and to the whole world. That we may depart this life in thy faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. That we may be bound together by thy Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all thy saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. O God, who didst wonderfully create and yet more wonderfully restore the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, thy Son, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's turn to page 821. <clears throat> I'm going to continue that theme this week of praying for government, for our government officials during this time of transition and uncertainty. Page 821, prayer 22, is that litany for sound government. Uh, let us pray that together when you get there. Page 821, Prayer 22. O Lord, our Governor, bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to other nations of the earth. To the President and President-elect and members of both cabinets, to governors of states and commonwealths, mayors of cities, and to all in administrative authority, grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. To senators and representatives, and those who make our laws in states, cities, and towns give courage, wisdom, and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. To the judges and officers of our courts give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice served. And finally, teach our people to rely on your strength and to accept their responsibilities to their fellow citizens that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor your holy name. And then let us turn over to page 833 and pray prayer 62 together. Page 833, the prayer of St. Francis. <clears throat> Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Hey, Rena. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous and all for thy love's sake. Amen. At this point, I invite your thanksgivings and intercessions silently or aloud.
and give thanks, Father, for all gathered here. I ask that you will keep them safe. For members who are ill, I ask that you will bring them, bring them health. Uh, for family and loved ones, friends who are ill as well, please bring them to health. Uh, keep us safe. May we rest well tonight and wake up refreshed and ready to serve you in the morning. Amen. On page 72 is the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Let us pray together. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto Thee, and has promised through Thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in His name, Thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of Thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of Thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Friends, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. I hope you are well overall. You are all in my prayers. Give your clergy a shout if you need anything. And we'll see you back here tomorrow at 6.30. Blessings, friends.